February. I want us to know that there is something that God has designed to do in our lives, in our families. And my prayer is that you will not miss it in the name of Jesus. This is the month that the Lord will make all the crooked paths to be made straight before you. Every crookedness, every rough road, every barrier before you, they are made straight in the name of Jesus. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you for your mighty word. You are an awesome God. There is nothing you cannot do. We hallow your name because you are on this throne. We hallow your name because you cannot change. Lord, as you go to your word, there shall be a performance of your word, a fulfillment of your word in the mighty name of Jesus. Give power to your word in the lives of men and women. Thank you, Lord, for answer prayers. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. The month that every crooked path are made straight. Now, what does it mean when we say crooked path? When we say rough path? Crooked path has to do with desires that we had that are unfulfilled. Pitfalls that accomplish people as they go in the way of life, in the journey of life. Lots of pitfalls, lots of disappointments, lots of setbacks. If you imagine you are driving a car, a small car, even if it's a big car, and you are driving on an earth road, but with a lot of bombs, pools of water, bombs, rough. You agree with me that the speed at which you, you'll be going will be highly reduced. Assuming the road from here to worry is an earth road, on third road, and many portals there, many bombs there, pools of water, another. And then somebody else is going on another road. The two of you have the same type of car, brand new car or two year old cars and but he is going on an express road on a plain road on a smooth road you discover that the person going on a smooth road will get to the destination faster than those going on rough roads it is exactly the same way when people have crookedness on their path in life when people have roughness as they are moving from one place to the other. And as we commence this Master Key Miracle Conference, this prayer and fasting, that is what God we want to do in our lives in our, and in our families. That every form of delay, every form of crookedness, every form of pitfall, every form of barrier, they shall be removed from your lives in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord has given his word concerning it. He has given his word about the fact that he will go ahead of us and make the crooked places straight. You see a man struggling, putting on his efforts to raise the family, to provide for the family, to train the children, to try and build even if it is two rooms but things are so tough and tough and tough it, it's become from one problem he moves to another problem from another problem to one problem and he gets tired when he gets tired what it means is the fact that there are lots of roughness crookedness on the path and you discover that with all the effort of that man, he's able to achieve very little. There might be another person, they graduated the same year. 
they went to the same school they read the same course but because the path of that man does not have crookedness no crooked crooked this time has told us is pitfalls setbacks barriers disappointment all kinds of business failures that person is experiencing it now the person who does not experience all that you discover that begins to fly in fact people will say ah this man is more successful why is that so he does not have crooked path before him why heaven has turned to plain road express road the path of his life and things become easy I believe we have a perception and understanding of what it means when the Bible says that Lord will make crooked path before us to be straight. And my prayer is that as you go on, this is the beginning of the year, we're just starting the year, every crookedness on your path, every roughness on your path, every pitfall, every disappointment, every failure, they shall be removed in the name of Jesus open with me to the book of isaiah chapter 45 isaiah 45 from verse 1 to 3. thus hear the lord to his anointed to cyrus whose right hand i have holden to subdue nations before him and i will lose the light the loins of kings to open before him the two lift gates and the gates shall not be shut i will go before thee and make the crooked places straight I will break in pieces the gates of brass, and cut in sunder the bars of iron. And I will give thee the treasures of darkness, and hidden riches of secret places, that thou mayest know that I, the Lord, which called thee by thy name, am the God of Israel. Thank you very much. The Lord was giving an assurance unto this king. Because we've discovered that God used this king, God prepared his, his heart, and he was an instrument in God's hands. And when God was speaking the word of assurance to him, he said, Thus said the Lord to Cyrus, who is anointed, whose hand I'm holding, to subdue nations, to do this, to do that. Now go to verse 2. He said, I will go before thee and make the crooked places straight. It is God that removes barriers. It is God that removes hindrances. It is God that removes pitfalls in the lives of the man. It's not because that man is smart. It's not the, because that man can pray. Though when we pray very well, it helps us. It moves the hand of God. It provokes God to act on our behalf. I don't want us to have the understanding or perception. And they say it's not how much we pray, it's not how much I fast, it's not how much I do anything. That is God that does it. No. There are people who provoke God by their prayer, by their commitment, by their offering, by their seed, by their devotion to the Lord. We must know that God is provoked on our behalf when we serve Him, when we hold on to Him. And that is why in this 21 days conference, you must set your heart, God, I know by my commitment, by my devotion, you will move on my behalf. Cyrus was not a king in Israel. But Cyrus was a king that God used to move the children of Israel, some of them, to go and rebuild to go and rebuild the temple in Jerusalem that had been pulled down. Now because this king responded to the assignment, the Lord spoke to him and God called him his anointed. Anytime a man yields himself as instrument, anytime a woman yields herself as instrument in the hands of God, if the person becomes an anointed of God the black person becomes a vessel of honor and the moment you are a vessel of honor in God's hand in fact I like to say God begins to go before you call it a dispatch rider 
call it any name, but it goes before you and prepares the way before you. And that's what happened here. He said, Thus said the Lord to Cyrus, is anointed. And I say, Whose hand am I am holding? I am holding his hand. Why, why would God be holding his hand? Because God wants to pull down enemies, nations, principalities. He wants to open gates before him. When we are committed to God, when you, you devote your life, you devote your time, you devote your energy unto God, God moves on your behalf, church. You must know that there is a way you can provoke God by your service, by your faith in Him, by your sacrifice in Him, by your uprightness. Oh, you can provoke God. The Bible says, and Enoch walked with God and he was not because God took him. Enoch was a man that stood upright in a generation of evil, just like this generation. People were doing so much evil. People were doing so much wickedness, but he walked with God. And the Bible said, walking with God means what? Obeying the Lord. Pleasing God. Try to do what we bring God pleasure. Let us set it in our heart that God, I just want to bring you pleasure. Eh? But the, this one is it compulsory that I do it. It's not compulsory that you do that thing, but it will bring pleasure to God if you do it. It's not compulsory that you do it. It doesn't mean you will not go to heaven. It doesn't mean you will go to hell. No, you not go to hell. But it will bring pleasure unto God when you do it. When we begin to live a life like that, we enter into a communion with God, into a covenant with God that we seek to bring pleasure to Him. He begins to fight our battles. And that's what God did for this king. Why will God be opening to live gate before Him? Why will God hold his hand and subdue nations and fight his battle? That means God become had become like his errand boy. Hello, church. Yes. Anything he wanted to do, God will go and do it. He was going to battle, God will go and fight the battle. He was going to a place, the gate is locked, God will open the gate. I mean, it was like God had now become the errand boy. When your ways will please God. He will go ahead of you and make things work for you. And that is what we are saying. That the crookedness of life. Oh, church, there are crookedness in life. There are ghost laws. There are, there, are, there are potholes in life. There are potholes in life. There are bombs in life that slow people down. You see three, four, five friends. They have been together, living together. They are doing everything together. They went to secondary school. Maybe all of them didn't go to university. This one will go and learn a trade. This one a driver. That one this. And they were moving. But suddenly, you discover some element of favor. Air of honor. Favor begins to follow one or two more than the others. And give them five years. This one has already built up. That one has married. This other one, from one problem to the other. It could be marital problem. Any guy wants to marry, they will be going. Something will happen. Everything will crash. He will be trying again. Everything will crash. And within five years or ten years that they finish school, one has gone to this far, one this far, and others might be like this. Do have. What caused it? This one, they were lazy. No, they were not lazy. What happened was the ways of these other ones. They, they were crookedness on their way. Crooked path was before them and nobody was able to make it straight for them. But these ones, the crooked path before them were made straight so they can run with speed. I want to pray even as we start this conference the power of God will bring speed to your lives in the mighty name of Jesus. In any way you have been delayed, any way you have been slowed down, maritally, professionally, academically, in any form, financially, 
financially things become tough you just you are just merry go landing merry go landing 15 years ago you rented you were living in two rooms 10 years ago and you came from two rooms in this street you moved to the second street or the third street see two rooms five years ago you moved from two rooms you moved to a, a, a one bedroom flat what is one bedroom flat see two rooms but you have your own toilet and kitchen and then for 15 years 20 years you discover that you are just merry go landing merry go landing i decree over your life in this month the lord is making all those pitfalls all those bombs all those potholes on your way is clearing them up and granting you speed in the mighty name of jesus the law makes all crooked path before you to be straight the lord takes over the problem the lord resolves the problem because you are committed to him that is his word let's go to isaiah 40 again isaiah chapter 40 verse 1 to five is that 40 verse 1 to 5 comfort ye comfort ye my people said your god speak ye comfortably to jerusalem and cry unto her that her warfare is accomplished that her iniquity is pardoned amen for she had received of the lord's hand double for all her sins the voice of him that cried in the wilderness prepare ye the way of the lord make straight in the desert a highway for our god Every valley shall be exalted, and every mountain and hill shall be made low, and the crooked shall be made straight, and the rough places plain, and the glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all flesh shall see it together, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken. Thank you very much. I want you to know the mouth of the Lord has spoken it, that your rough roads shall be made straight, that the crooked path before you, the crooked path before you are many people have crooked path before them many many people you see people they graduated together but after some time you just discover that you just discover there is a change in their levels one is so high and it's as if that one went to study abroad he didn't study abroad they all went to the same university they were in the same class it's just that heaven has helped this one heaven has buttered his bread and this is what the lord is now saying is a time of visitation upon you upon this church upon every family here in the mighty name of jesus let me read that scripture again chapter 40 he said yes comfort ye comfort ye my people see the lord is a time of comfort it's a time you know that the Lord is visiting and is bringing great comfort upon you. This 21 days conference is a time that God has ordained to remove you from hardship, to remove you from roughness, to remove you from crooked path and put you on the pedestal of growth, on the pedestal of success, on the pedestal of finance. Hey, do you know there are some people, what are, you see them, they can pray. Hey, they do this, they do that, but what they lack is finance. Oh, finance. I say, as the Lord is speaking comfort to your life, comfort to your family, that comfort will result in all round blessings in the mighty name of Jesus. It's a time of divine visitation. The note I put there, I say, it's a time of great visitation of God upon his children. A time to restore in double portions what was lost or destroyed. You see, that scripture was talking about us preparing the way of the Lord. Look at verse 2 of Isaiah 40. The voice of the one crying in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be exalted why is that taking place because god is moving and coming in his power over your life over your children over your business the lord is visiting church did somebody hear what i said the lord is visiting he's visiting you and this is the time to position yourself for that great visitation 
It's a time to say, God, my crooked path you are making straight. We know the story of that man. The Bible says he was sick for 38 years and he was always staying near the pool because every season, every season, the angel of the Lord came down and the angel of the Lord troubled the water and the first person to enter the water got, got healed and he was there. The Bible says he's been sick for 38 years. Let's assume he, when that sickness started, they didn't bring him to that pool. Maybe for the first five years he was at home. But after fifth year, they brought him to the pool. So if you remove five from 38, that means for about 33 years. Or it, let, let's even assume he's been dead. He's been sick for 10 years at home. They've gone to this place, gone to that place, gone to that place for 10 years. They didn't see any change. So after the 10th year, they brought him to that place. It means that man has been sitting by that pool for 28 years. 28 years. A man was born, graduated, started working, and get married. 28 years, a man already has a child. And that man has been sitting there for 28 years. He had witnessed people getting healed. He had witnessed people getting delivered. He had seen people, people without eyes, they entered into the water. Eyes popped up and they started seeing. He has seen Kashioko people looking like this and they rolled into the water. They came out, they were whole. He had seen all the good things. Then, why had he not experienced it? Because of crooked path. The crooked path before him was so serious that, oh, you know, initially they brought him there. I assume that the family were with him. I don't think that that man had married because he had been sick when he was young. And I'm not sure you can easily see anybody who will marry a man that is bedridden. No. So I had no wife. But I had brother and sister, probably parents. They were there. But they got tired when they discovered that her, his case <laughs> was not ordinary. When they discovered that there were always forces and powers, they were acting against him. They left him. Before his problem, we jump into their lives. Let's go to the book of John chapter 5. Let's read that account in the book of John chapter 5 from verse 1. After this, there was a feast of the Jews, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now there is at Jerusalem by the sheep market a pool, which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethsaida, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folk, of blind, halt, withered, waiting for the moving of the water. For an angel went down at a certain season into the pool and troubled the water. Whosoever then first after the troubling of the water stepped in was made whole of whatsoever disease he had. And a certain man was there, which had an infirmity thirty and eight years. When Jesus saw him lie, he knew that he had been he had been now a long time in that case. He said unto him, Will thou be made whole? The impotent man answered him, Sir, I have no man when the water is troubled to put me into the pool. But while I was coming, another step bent down before me. Jesus said unto him, Rise, take up thy bed and walk. And immediately the man was made whole and took up his bed and walked. And on the same day was the Sabbath. Thank you very much. This man was there. Like I explained and analyzed. I want to assume maybe a, between 28 years and 32 years. But when he became sick, when he started that sickness, they didn't bring him to that pool from that day or from that year it was when they had tried all the pool and nothing happened that was when they brought him to that pool so that 38 years remove 6 years from it remove 10 years anyone so that man had been there for almost let's just say about 30 years 30, 32 years that he's been sitting there he was not the only one that were there there were many other important folk some were blind, some were lame, some had goiter, some had, had hunchback, some couldn't stand up. Different folks. And every 
every season the angel come the angel came to trouble the water this man witnessed others enter first and they came out healed they came out delivered they came out liberated but this man for all these years could not get anything done because there was crookedness though he was at the potter's house yet he was going on with broken pot he was at the potter's house he was going on with break with, with leaking pot and i want to declare as many as come to the potter's house today you have come to the gathering of the saints of god you have come to the assembly of the children of god the power of god will touch you the power of god will heal you and your story shall be turned around in the mighty name of jesus that scripture we read said he will give you double for your sins that means the sins there is not just the sin that you committed but rather the destruction that you have experienced the delays that you have experienced the disappointment the, the disappointment that you have experienced the failures that you have experienced the lord is saying god will give you double blessings that's what we read in that book of isaiah chapter 40. he will give you double double blessings of those you must believe the lord that there is a visitation over my life, over my finance, over my business, and over my ministry. Like I've told us before, now many times, some of the reason why our success is not pronounced is because some of us, or many of us, will abandon God's assignment. You abandon what God has given you to do. You think it is when you just wake up and just pursue business, pursue business. Do you know what the book of Agai said? Let's go to the book of Agai. Agai. Chapter 1 from verse 2. Read for me. Agai chapter 1 from verse 2. Thus speak, speaketh the Lord of hosts, saying, These people say, The time is not come, the time that the Lord's house should be built. Then came the word of the Lord by Haggai the prophet, saying, Is it time for you, O ye, to dwell in your cyclic, sealed, oh, sealed, sealed out, houses? Houses with sealing. Okay, sealed houses, and this house lie waste. Now therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, Consider your ways. Ye have sown much, and bring in little. Ye eat, but ye have not enough. Ye drink, but ye are not filled with drink. Ye clothe you, but there is none warm. And he that earneth wages, earneth wages to put it into a bag with holes. Thus hear the Lord of hosts, consider your ways. Go up to the mountain, and bring wood, and build the house, and I will take pleasure in it, and I will be glorified, hear the Lord. Ye looked for much, and lo, it came to little. And when ye brought it home, I did blow upon it. Why, see the Lord of hosts, because of my house that is waste, and ye run every man unto his own house. Therefore the heaven over you is stayed from dew, and the earth is stayed from her fruit. And I called for a drought upon the land, and upon the mountains, and upon the corn, and upon the new wine, and upon the oil, and upon that which the ground bringeth forth, and upon men, and upon cattle, and upon all the labor of the hands. Then Zerubbabel the son of Shittel, and Joshua the son of Jezebel, the high priest, with all the remnants of the people, obeyed the voice of the Lord their God, and the words of Haggai the prophet, as the Lord their God had sent him. And the people did fear before the Lord. Thank you very much. Did you hear that? Church, did you hear that? People were running about to do their business. People were running about to build their own house. And they seal it. And they put AC. They put fine tire. They did everything. But what did they do to the house of the Lord? Talk, talk, mommy. Morgan. What did they do to the house of the Lord? They abandoned it. They left it untouched. Like now we have been coming here to do work at the cathedral many of us have not been coming up we've not been coming 
where we still have next Saturday by God's grace change the Lord is saying there why are you crying we are laboring I'm walking walking out I cannot see God said I'm the one that did what blew it away hello church why are we not answering is that not what he said we'll read it again Ega chapter 1 let me start to read from verse 3 then came the word of the Lord by Hagar the prophet saying is it time for you O ye to dwell in your sealed houses and this house my house lie waste now therefore thus said the Lord of hosts consider your ways ye have sown much and bringing little ye eat but ye have not enough ye drink but ye are not filled with drink you are not your test is not satisfied ye clothe you but there is no warmth and either any wages any wages to put it in a bag with holes why is it thus say the lord of hosts consider your way go up to the mountains and bring wood and build the house that i will take pleasure in it and i will be glorified said the lord when we when you abandon god's assignment when you put god's case low priority you risk this that you are just laboring laboring running after and at the end of one year and the end of six months and the end of two years three years you see all this thing I've been doing. Where is it? You put in, you put in five hundred thousand into a business. After one year or after two years, that five hundred thousand, everything, money you have plus the goods, should be about how much remain how much that you have. After two years of five hundred thousand investment, maybe not one point two, at least. It, should, it shouldn't be less than 600,000 or 700,000. But at the end of two years, your 500,000, when you calculated both home and abroad, both goods and money, everything is slightly less than 300,000. God is saying he did what? Because you abandoned his work, because you abandoned his house, he did what? He did what, church? Blew it away. When would you set God number one? He takes care of the crooked path before you, church. And that is why you may say, What of me? I'm just coming to church. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. Look at that person going to that church. We even know the way he's living or she's living in our compound. He doesn't care for anybody. He doesn't, but it's, it's as if he's making it. Hey, you have a different covenant, church. You have a covenant, and the covenant is to raise army for you for God, and the covenant is to stand with him, and he will, his hand will lift you up. Moreover, you don't know the details of that person you are making reference to. The assignment God has given you is your own to teach in the house of God. Is your own to nurture children or to nurture the youth or the nurture me women or men. What are what is your assignment? Some people just come to church. Honestly, they have no assignment. Their assignment is just to warm the bench and can't ah uh, when they are taking attendance, they know they, they are present. Well, we don't take attendance. But heaven takes the attendance. But is that all you are doing? The Bible says, Enoch walked with God. And he was not. Why? Because of this, his relationship with God. Because of the depth of his commitment. And the Bible says, God took him. He didn't see, see death. Not just that. What of Noah? Noah found favor with God because his way was perfect before God. He was upright and the Lord decided that you will build me an ark. Do you know it is a privilege that in your lifetime we are building the sanctuary of the Lord. Actually God has given me the name of that sanctuary. At the right time we shall hear it. 
He has given me the name. I've been wondering, I just kept mute about it. I thought it was not going to be called Gloryland City, but Gloryland City is a city, not one building. Hello, church. Gloryland City is a city. This is part of Gloryland City. That is part of Gloryland City. And there are some other buildings we're taking over. Amen. That is part of Gloryland City. But that one, that sanctuary, God has given a name to it. Now, you must make sure that your role in God's kingdom you, is established, is known. You are not doing it so that I will know you, brother will know you, sister will know you. No, you are doing it to register yourself in heaven. Hello, church. Any service you do for the Lord, whether concerning the sanctuary or concerning your fellow brethren, Many times that you come to church, it just occurs to you, ah, why this person didn't come today? That person didn't come today. Hey, what, what of this one, that one? God brings it to your heart all the time. What is the Lord telling you to do? Begin to visit those people. Begin to follow them up. Begin to pray for them. That is why that body is so strong. Any time you receive a body to do something in the church or to do something in your neighborhood, the Lord is speaking to you. It's an assignment I'm giving you. But some people, instead of executing the assignment, they turn it to the topic of their complaint. Anywhere they get to, that's what they complain about. Anywhere they go, they must talk about it. They talk, talk, talk about it. They've not seen anybody that has told them that that thing is so burdensome in you because God wants you to do something about it. The same in the house of God, church. What is the burden you have when you come? It is your area of ministry. It's your ministry. It's an assignment God is giving you. That by the grace of God, by next Sunday, we're going to pray for one of our brothers and we'll be commissioned to lead the youth. Since brother Emmanuel Oluatosi left, we have not had a youth leader, somebody, but the Lord will be, there is, a, there is a name that has come up and will be trusting God for the grace of God upon his life to do much more than we have ever experienced. So what is your own assignment? It is when you carry out God's assignment, he removes the crooked path before you. And he goes ahead of you and fight for you. And that will be your portion in the name of Jesus. When the important man saw Jesus, Jesus said, Would thou be made old? And he was telling stories. He was saying this. That's not what Jesus asked him. But Jesus knew he had been there long. Jesus spoke to him. Stand up, take your bed, and go home. And he was healed. God, Jesus, removed the crooked path before him. Where he had stayed for 38 years, or let's say, like I, I analyzed, say about 30 years, he, he had been there. That day, he moved forward. I decree somebody, a family, here this morning, those listening to this message, you are moving forward from where you have been stagnated for years in the mighty name of Jesus. It doesn't matter the power that has held you bound. It doesn't matter the circumstances that have held you bound. I decree such powers are broken in the mighty name of Jesus. The Lord is granting you speed. Some that have been there, you are just being, this is how you move in the path of life. This is how you are moving. When some people are running or when some people are walking fast, you are moving like a even my mommy that is 92 years old moves faster than you. And you are, you are just 30 something. You are 40. My mom is 92 years old. She can still move faster than you. She, she still be going. She still climbs the staircase. From downstairs she goes upstairs. Then sometimes she comes down. She still drives. She still... Uh -uh. But you, your life, this is the way you are doing. I break the show that has slowed you down all these years in the mighty name of Jesus because the crooked path before you this morning they are made straight in the mighty name of Jesus 
You know the story of the children of Israel? They were banned for years in Egypt. Things were so tough for them. The mighty hand of God came upon them and came upon their situation. And they were liberated. They were set free. But I want us to see what happened. And that is what God wants to do in our lives. In the book of Exodus, let's go to Exodus. Exodus chapter 14 from verse 10. Exodus 14 from verse 10. God will be doing that miracle in your life. Uh, uh, that amen is not, doesn't have faith. God will be doing this miracle in your lives. In the name of Jesus. Okay, you can read for me. And when Pharaoh drew near, the children of Israel lifted up their eyes, and behold, the Egyptians marched after them, and they were so afraid. And the children of Israel cried out unto the Lord, and they said unto Moses, Because there were no graves in Egypt, as thou taken us away to die in the wilderness, wherefore hast thou dealt thus with us to carry us forth out of Egypt? Is not this the word that we did tell thee in Egypt, saying, Let us alone, that we may serve the Egyptians? For it had been better for us to serve the Egyptians than that we should die in the wilderness. And Moses said unto the people, Fear ye not, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord, which he will show to you today. For the Egyptians whom ye have seen today, ye shall see them again no more forever. The Lord shall fight for you, and ye shall hold your peace. And the Lord said unto Moses, Wherefore criest thou unto me? Speak unto the children of Israel that they go forward. But lift up thy rod, and stretch out thy hand over the sea, and divide it. And the children of Israel shall go on dry ground through the midst of the sea. And I, behold, I will harden the hearts of the Egyptians, and they shall follow them. And I will get me honor upon Pharaoh, and upon all his hosts, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. And the Egyptians shall know that I am the Lord, when I have gotten me honor upon Pharaoh, upon his chariots, and upon his horsemen. And the angel of God, which went before the camp of Israel, removed and went behind them. And the pillar of the cloud went from before their face, and stood behind them. And it came between the camp of the Egyptians and the camp of Israel, and it was a cloud and darkness to them. But it gave light by night to these so that the one came not near the other all the night. And Moses stretched out his hand over the sea, and the Lord caused the sea to go back by a strong east wind all that night, and made the sea dry land, and the waters were divided. And the children of Israel went into the midst of the sea, upon the dry ground, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. And the Egyptians pursued and went in after them to the midst of the sea, even all Pharaoh's horses his chariots and his horsemen. And it came to pass that in the morning watch the Lord looked unto the host of the Egyptians through the pillar of fire and of the cloud and troubled the host of the Egyptians and took up their chariot wheels that it drove them heavily so that the Egyptians said, Let us flee from the face of Israel. For the Lord fighted for them against the Egyptians. And the Lord said unto Moses, Stretch out thy hand over the sea that the waters may come again unto the Egyptians, upon their chariots and upon their horsemen. And Moses stretched forth his hand over the sea, and the sea returned to his strength when the morning appeared, and the Egyptians fled against it, and the Lord overthrew the Egyptians in the midst of the sea. And the waters returned and covered the chariots and the horsemen, and all the host of Pharaoh that came into the sea after them. There remained not so much as one of them. But the children of Israel walked upon dry land in the midst of the sea, and the waters were a wall unto them on their right hand and on their left. Thus yet, thus the Lord saved Israel that day out of the hands of the Egyptians. And Israel saw the Egyptians dead upon the seashore. Verse 31 and the last verse. And Israel saw that great work which the Lord did upon the Egyptians, and the people feared the Lord, and believed the Lord, and his servant Moses. Thank you very much. I wanted us to read that scripture to the end for us to see how the mighty hand of God fights for his children. Now, when the children of Israel saw the host of the Egyptians chasing after them, and before them, in front of them, 
they had this red sea where would they run to they couldn't go forward because of the sea and at the back the egyptian chariots and army were coming running after them the bible says the children of israel cry unto the lord they didn't cry for cry of hell they cried to insult god really they cried you see god you see yourself eh? you're a poor general you ask us to leave look out look out and then they started speaking and insulting moses he didn't know what we told you we shouldn't have left egypt and you should have left us there you see when people see situations the first thing you should do is to know that the lord will not abandon you hello church any situation that comes to you because you are for the lord you are before the lord in god's presence you are his own you must know that however tough it is you will not be abandoned he will carry you through and when you know that when you believe that when situations come it will make you even when you if you are tired of praying it will make you to just be praising the lord be praising him be celebrating he has done so much for us he has taken away our sorrow though you are seeing sorrow facing you just be praising god now what did moses say what did moses say he says stand ye see still and see the salvation of the lord which he will show you today for the egyptians you see today you will see them no more forever and then god now told him why are you people crying why are you shouting tell the people to move forward i will divide the red sea and when the children of israel will cross over on dry land the egyptians will do the same then i will take honor over them I want us to take note of that. The Lord told Moses ahead of time that the Egyptian will follow you through the Red Sea. When I've created a dry land for you, you and your people, you are going, you are going, they too will do the same thing. And I will take honor over Pharaoh and the Egyptian army and their chariots. That was the clear thing that God told Moses. So before the Red Sea was divided, Moses already knew that this thing God wants to do for them, that they are going to enter the sea and cross to the other side. Egyptians will do the same. Sometimes God tells you certain things. And when he tells you, it is for you to... Sometimes it is through revelation, through dim, anyhow. It could be through a message like this. That when you are hearing the message, Spirit of God will tell you how it affects you. This situation, that situation, that is what God is addressing. We should not joke with it. Take note of it. Write it down sometime. Read it in your head so that you know that this is what God will do. When we tell him, God, we know you are going to do it. We know you are in charge. We know you are the director. You are provoking God to move on your behalf. The Bible says the children of Israel, after Moses divided it, the rest of it, they went on dry land. And as they were going, that was throughout the night. The Red Sea took time to divide. If you read it very well, it started dividing from night. It was around the morning the full division took place. But since the Lord had told the Israelites, Moses, that the Israelites should march forward, they did not wait for the express road to finish before they entered. Moses commanded them to go into the sea as soon as the division started. So that process was taking place till morning and by morning the children of Israel was they were already getting to the other end. But the Bible says in the night the angel that has been following the Israelites. No church there is an angel following you. Any situation you find yourself the Lord has an assigned angel following you. Assigned angel to carry you. Assigned angel to keep you. The angel moved from the front. He's been in the form of pillar of fire in the night and cloudy pillar in the day. But that night, that pillar moved to the back and it became multifunctional. The Bible said he gave darkness to the children of to the Egyptians, but he gave light to the people of Israel. That is an awesome, a single pillar, a pillar that nobody could touch. Now became he became light to the people of God and darkness to the to the Egyptians. Why was this so? So the Egyptians, they could not see very well. 
they could not move fast with their chariots. In fact, the Bible says, God made the wheels of their chariot to be heavy. How will it be heavy? The ground under their chariot became mushy. Hello, church. Can you see where there's quarter quarter and you want to ride your bicycle? Here, your, your bicycle will move fast, right? It should not move fast. That was exactly what God did. The dry land that God created, drying up the water of the sea completely. And the children of Israel were marching on grand land and they were going, going. The moment the Egyptian followed at the back, those land, the water table rose up again. The land became what? Mushy. So when they, had, they were driving their chariot, it became heavy. Hello, church. As they were driving that, if it were a dry land, it wouldn't be heavy. It would be moving fast. Chariot will move faster than human beings. But God wanted to slow down them. He made their own ground to be mushy. So as they were driving chariot, it was like driving through mud. Driving through mud. Driving through mud. And they started saying, hey, God is fighting for them. Okay, we all know what God did there. He removed the crooked path before the children of Israel. The crooked part there was the Egyptian behind them, chasing them, and the Resi before them, preventing them from moving. God divided the Resi. And by the time the Bible says, the children of Israel has crossed to the other end. The Lord told Israel, point your rod to the sea again. And the sea did what? Came back and swallowed the host of Egyptians. So God removed all barriers all failures, all pitfalls, all portals before the children of Israel. And that's why they sang a new song. I will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horses and his rider he has thrown into the sea. We will sing unto the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horses and its riders he has thrown into the sea. I want you to know as you march on in this month of February, you are starting a journey, you are riding on eagle's wing, the hand of God will carry you. You must know that the rough roads, the, the crooked way, the crooked path that have slowed you down, you know it that you have been slow. You know you have been not the moving fast. You know it that something is wrong. But I decree to you, the power of God is turning the crooked path into a straight road, into an express in the name of Jesus. If God can create dry ground in the midst of sea, let's look at it. This is sea full of water. Assuming we have a mega gigantic pump and it pumps out the water of the sea. When the water finishes, how should the seabed be? It's normally mushy now. True of us, it should, it should be mushy. Because water was just pumped out. But the Bible says it was a dry land. And as the children of Israel were stepping and running and going to the other side, the ground beside them became what? Mushy. For the Egyptians. To the extent that they drove their chariots heavy. Our God is an awesome God. That God is fighting for you. That God is carrying you. There are challenges you are facing. There are challenges your business is facing. There are challenges your children are facing. Know that there is a mighty hand of God that subdues nations before you. Just like unto Cyrus. But don't forget, be an instrument in the hand of God. Be a vessel for God. Don't be a vessel to serve. Once you set your mind, Lord, I want to be a vessel for you. I want your name to be honored and to be to your name to be glorified in my life. That means you are living for him. God will decorate your life, church. Live for Jesus. Don't live for yourself. You have been living for yourself for all these years. How much have you achieved? How much? Hey, is it the way I want it, the way I want it. How much has it given to you? There are many people, they are so proud and arrogant. They feel they can't come under anybody. And that is where their ministry, they are not able to fulfill their ministry. 
Because God has not given God has their ministry to stay under divine leadership and they function well and they excel. But because of arrogance, arrogance, arrogance. They're so arrogant. God cannot even come into anything to their hands. Anything tangible, God cannot come into their hands. They are so arrogant. If you can humble yourself before the Lord, the Lord will, will order your steps. Number one is bring you under divine leadership. Somebody you must be able to submit to. Somebody that God has established for you to learn from. And that when that one begins to happen, you see doors beginning to open. You see abundance coming upon you. You see how effective you will be to affect your generation. We must come back to the Lord. We must say, Lord, I submit myself to you. I submit my will to you. Some people say, but they say it's good to be strong will. Yes, it's good to be strong will. But you must recognize the people that you submit to. You must recognize the people that must give you instruction. There are authority. There is hierarchy in God's kingdom. In God's assignment. In God's assignment. You must recognize the person you must submit to. That is what is undoing many people. You just want to, hey, I'm a young man. I just want to go and preach. There are many such people are fed to the trap of the devil. Some, they fed into the trap of fornication. Some, it is the arrow of darkness that hits them. Let's not forget baby Jesus. The angel went and woke up the father. Carry that child and run to Egypt because some people want to kill that child. How can some people want to kill that child? Is that not the son of God? Is that not the savior of the world? Is that not the person God has sent? If God has sent, how can some people want to kill him? But at that time, he needed to run to cover. There is a place of cover God has made for everybody. When God brings you to a ministry, is a covering he has brought you there. You must submit in that ministry. There are many young people like that. They run out. They say ministry, ministry. Unprepared. Without divine covering. Many have died. Many young children. They just have stroke. I can 20 something year old child. Early 30. Having stroke. Why is that so? Because the arrow hits them. I prophesy upon you. Every arrow of darkness. Every arrow of infirmity. Every arrow of stroke. Every arrow of high blood pressure. Every arrow that the enemy. In fact, every arrow of madness. That the enemy is sending. I command the arrow to go back to sender. In the name of Jesus. I decree divine covering over your life. If you go to Revelation chapter 12, there was the woman there that gave birth to the man child. The Bible says, after he gave birth to the man child and the serpent went after her, he, she was taken to a place that has been prepared for her. There is a place prepared for you, be people of God. So we say, no, if you look at the way that reverend talked to me, I will go to this other place. Where was that place prepared for you? I've told us before. I've told us before. Some people that just left like that before you know you hear they have died. Why? Because they went to a place of no covering. Because that was not prepared for them. The Lord woke up Joseph, father of Jesus, physical father of Jesus. He said, Joseph, stand up. Take the young child and the mother. Go to where? Go to Egypt. Joseph said, Ah, uh -uh. why, why, why should I go to Egypt? Mm -mm -mm -mm. I better go to America instead of Egypt. And Joseph begin to go to where? America. Is that where God sent him? Where God prepared cover for baby Jesus was where? Egypt. Some people, God brought them here because there is a covering God provided for them. But out of arrogance, arrogance, out of pride, out of how can, how can, they run out. Please, I want to plead with us people of God. Remain under the covering that the Lord has provided for you. Remain under the covering, under the tutelage of what God has done for you so that your security can be assured and you will be secured in the name of Jesus.
the Lord has promised that his mighty hand is carrying you and we make the crooked path straight every crooked path before you know it for sure the Lord will carry you through every ghost low every bomb every pitfall every pit that enemy have, have put up for you the hand of the Lord will carry you and victory shall be yours just focus on the Lord I want you to focus on God this 21 days prayer and fasting don't joke with it don't say you see my word even that word that's why before you leave everybody must get a copy of the prayer guide everybody buy for yourself buy for your children because you'll be able to even when you are in your place of work during your break pray that prayer put little prayer points there pray that prayer be committed to it because it's your season of miracle signs and wonders will begin to happen things that have not happened before the hand of the Lord will begin to visit you and don't forget the hand of the Lord carries you and opens gates before you open the two leaf gates bring abundance your way in fact that Isaiah 45 verse 3 say he will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places I open your eyes to the secret riches on your part of life in the mighty name of Jesus those riches you don't know that are there the riches you don't know last Sunday I was telling us about a guy that the Lord opened her eyes and she saw a well the well had been there but her eyes were blinded to them there are some blessings, abundance, riches, and treasure that are around you, but you cannot see it until God opens your eyes. From today, my God will begin to give you inspiration. He will begin to give you revelation. And your eyes shall be opened unto such abundance in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Shall we stand up to pray? I want to pray for those who are watching online. If you are there, you want to surrender your life to Jesus, just say this prayer after me. Lord Jesus, I surrender my life to you. I invite you into my life. I've been doing things of my own accord. I've been struggling with my energy. I've been sweating out and laboring and toiling. But today, I invite you into my life. Jesus, Son of God, take control of my life of my business of everything I do I hand them over to you every sin in me every iniquity in me I plead for forgiveness Jesus son of God forgive my sins thank you because I'm a new creature send your Holy Spirit to me fill me with your Holy Spirit so that from today henceforth I will do your will. I will please you. Thank you, Lord, for answer prayers. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Father, I pray for all these ones that have surrendered their life to Christ. Those in the sanctuary here and online, I pray that the power of the Lord, the grace of the Lord, be released over their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. The sin that does so easily beset them, I pray that the blood of Jesus will wash away the sins. They are free, they are made whole in the mighty name.